Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Rhonda and this is a little bit of everything homestead. Today I think I'm going to kind of do a mashup of a bunch of little things that we have going on around here on the homestead. So we're going to start in the kitchen. Today I'm going to make something that I don't know why I haven't already made it, but we went to the farmer's market yesterday and I picked up some red onions. So I'm going to make pickled red onions. We loved pickled stuff. So I don't know why I haven't already tried making these. Um, we do pickled eggs. We do pickled vegetables. We do pickled cucumbers. Like if we can pickle it, we try pickling it. So we are going to do these onions today. So in the research that I did, it was like a one-to-one, -one, one part vinegar, one part water. And I'm going to use, I'm going to make one spicy and one regular for the onions. So I think I'm gonna do, I probably am gonna want at least three cups of brine. So I'm gonna do one and a half of apple cider vinegar. I'm just using the Mrs. Bragg's and then one and a half water. And then I think I'm gonna do two teaspoons of salt to two tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna put it on the stove and just let it get warm so that the sugar and the salt dissolve. And then I'm gonna let it cool. So while that's happening, I'm gonna cut up the onions and the peppers. I've seen people cut these different ways. Some people like them really thick. Some people cut them where they're super thin some people cut them where they are like still in rings i'm going to cut my onion in half and some people like slice them this way i am going to slice them this way so i'm just gonna take off a good part here of the outer skin and then just Slice them up. And I have three medium size ish onions that I'm using. And I'm cutting them, I wouldn't say thin, thin ish to medium, I guess. Like, like that and then I will break them up and put them into my jar and see how they fit and then I have one jalapeno I'm gonna slice up and put in one of the jars and you want to pack them as tight pack them in there as tight as you can get them and I warmed up my brine and it is cooling on the stove and I tasted it and it wasn't really pickly. So I put in, I think a teaspoon of pickling spice. And then I also wanted to taste it for like the sugar and the salt content. I like pickled um, onions, but I don't like them like where they're super tart. So I just put that sugar in there just to like cut that acid a little bit. So I thought um, the sugar, the two tablespoons of sugar worked out for the three cups of liquid that I have in there. So I hope I have enough for the other jar because this little jar is not filling up with this one. Well, maybe it will with this one onion. You want to pack her in there good. Do you guys like pickled onions? I think, A, they are just beautiful because, you know, they're like a red onion, which why are they called red onions? They're not red, they're purple. But anyway, the, um, the pickling brine will turn like a really pretty, like pink color and it's just beautiful. So I think I'm going to slice into my other um, onions. I need more. I need more in this little jar and then I have to fill up this jar. So I am just going to clean up my onions and get them into the jar.
my brine is cool, so I am going to bring it over and pour it over my onions that I have in the jar. And you wanna make sure that everything is covered. And I'm gonna do this one. Push it down. I should probably grab a knife and let's just push it in there and debubble it. Because when you do that, you probably need more liquid. careful when you're pushing this stuff down because it'll overflow. All right, let's debubble this little guy. Oh my gosh, he needed a lot more. I hope I have enough juice. It's such a beautiful day out today, you guys. I have my windows open, so if you hear the lawnmower, my neighbor across the street is mowing the grass. All right, there we go. Now I am just going to put the lids on. When I put the lids on, I am just going to put them on finger tight. They don't need to be super tight. So you just give them a little spin and there you go. Onions are done, you guys. I'm just going to throw them in the fridge. Some people eat them as soon as the very next day. I think I might, I might try them tomorrow just to kind of check on the flavor, but I think I want them to sit for like four or five days just so they get like pickly, you know? Um, so that's it. Chore number one done. Let's go outside and look at the garden. There's some hosta flowers I wanna um, prune off. The coleus has gone to seed, so I want to prune that off um, and just take a peek around and see what there is to see out there. Overall, the driveway garden looks pretty good. I probably need to come through and pull some weeds. And then, like I said, cut off some of the spent blooms on the plants. My powwow coneflower is done. And then over here, a couple of the hosta need to be trimmed down. I should probably fertilize and give them a good boost of nutrients or minerals or whatever it is before fall. My coleus needs a haircut. My little Veronica is done so that can get trimmed up. But overall, it looks pretty good, I guess. Pull some weeds, give it a drink, and then we go into the back garden. Here are the hydrangeas that I got the other day at Lowe's and some of the hostas for the back garden. I'm just starting to find my flow back here. I got some ajuga that I planted. Um, Lamium, a fern, Brunera, Corabels, starting to take shape. I think back here behind these chairs, let me move over here. This is where I want to put the one hydrangea, and then over here I want to put the other one because my Annabelle's that I transplanted. The chairs are kind of in the way, but this is where I want to put the red hydrangeas just to give it a pop of color. And then fill this landscaping here with some like white river rock, just so it pops a little bit. 
and then I will have the path continue down with the bricks and then more pea gravel. So I think overall it's kind of coming together little by little. That is the back side of the driveway garden so far. Normally I save these spent flowers on the cone flowers for the wildlife in the winter time, but this is its first year in the ground. So I think I'm going to just trim it back and throw these all away. Or maybe trimming it back will encourage it to make a new flower. Maybe I shouldn't cut them off. All right, now thinking about it a little bit, I don't think I'm going to cut, I was gonna cut all my cone flowers, but I think that is the only one I'm gonna cut because I, I want it to be a strong plant through the winter to come back in the spring. Do you guys know what to do? Leave me, can you leave me a message in the comments on whether I should clip it or not? I don't know. Sometimes I do. Like last year when we were at the other homestead, I didn't, but I had like way more, you know? These are only two little plants, so let me know in the comments what you guys do. All right, I went through and clipped off all the spent blooms, mostly on the hosta, um, and then this coleus, and it looks so much better. I did my little Veronica's and then the coleus and I'm going to leave my cone flower because I just uh, I don't know now thinking about it more so the flowers like this on my hostas I am leaving because the pollinators are still out and they are going bonkers over it so I will leave those flowers on for now there is another chore done off of the to-do list. The next one that we have to do, I need Scott's help. And it's gonna be a fun one. Yesterday, when we were on our way home from the farmer's market, we stopped, we drive through this little town and they were having a craft fair. So we stopped just to poke around and see what there was. And we got these. Blueberries. Look at how beautiful they are. Oh my gosh. And then we also got a yellow raspberry, fall gold raspberry it's called. Look at that. So I am going to need Scott's help to get these in the ground. Hey you guys, there's a change in plans. I was going to end this video with Scott and I planting the blueberries. But my girlfriend just called and said, I dug up a whole bunch of hostas out of my backyard and I was gonna throw them away. And I thought, oh, I should call you to see if you want them. And I said, yes, of course I do. I would love free hostas. So now I am gonna go over to her house. She lives like, I don't know, 10 minutes away. I'm gonna go over and pick up those free hostas from my girlfriend. Okay, you guys, I'm at my girlfriend's house and she went a little nuts. So she has got a ton of hostas. So let me turn you around and I'll show you. Okay, so this is what she dug up on the side of her house. And she has all of these hostas that she is going to share with me. Maybe a couple of ferns. You never know what she's going to throw in. So I have to get these in the back of my car. Okay, while she's figuring out what she's keeping and what she's giving away, I thought I would show you guys her cute little gardens. Look at her wheelbarrow. Isn't that so pretty? Of course she left the price tag on it. <laughs> Christ's sakes. And then over here, she's got a fun little pig with some... I don't know what that is. Is that milkweed maybe? And then over here, she's got some more cutesy stuff. Sorry for the wind. I 
next to her shed. And this she just, this used to be their vegetable garden, but she doesn't grow vegetables anymore. So she's got a bunch of hosta. She's got some Russian sage, some brunera back there, uh, clematis, some iris. She's got a cute little scarecrow woman. She's pretty blowing in the wind. And she's got a cute little, probably a curly fries next to this little goat. And then she's got some lambs here. And some, maybe that's a form of sedum. And some bee balm. And then we come over here. And she's got a uh, peony and then I think some daisies in the back another clematis back there and that is her cute little garden I got the whole back of my car filled with free hostas you guys Ooh, you can't beat free right I made it home with the hostas I'm so excited. I think I'm going to unload them and say goodnight for now, and I will see you on the next video. Thanks for following along on my journey, and we'll see you next time. Bye, friends. <laughs>